So, uh, hello everyone. I am Monodeep Dutt from Earth and Network India team. Uh, Earth Day was first commemorated on April 22, 1970 in the US. Now, 53 years later, it is commemorated by billions of people across 192 countries to come together for the good of our shared home, Earth. Each year, a theme is announced for Earth Day. The global theme for uh, 2024 is Planet versus Plastics. The theme will unite all who inhabit Earth in an unwavering commitment to call the end of plastics as these pollute the water, soil, and air leading to negative impacts on the planet's health, animals, and the biodiversity. Today is World Food Day. To commemorate it, we are here to discuss the impact of plastics on agriculture. As FAO documents say, I'll just quote, Plastic products have become a convenient tool in many areas of life, and agriculture is no different. Plastics are used for everything, from seedling trays and irrigation tubing to pesticide containers and livestock feed bags. However, and here comes the problem, their proliferation has led to mounting environmental problems that threaten soil health, water quality, human well-being. FO estimates over 12 million tons of plastic are integrated into the agricultural process every year. To discuss the issue, we are proud to present a galaxy of speakers here today with us, each an expert in their own right. Other Network is most grateful to each sparing their time, uh, valuable time to be with us. Our first speaker is Dr. Luca Nizetto who is a leading scientist at the Norwegian Institute of Water Research and has done pioneering work on how plastic is affecting agrosystem. With a background in biology, ecology, environmental chemistry, and environmental modeling, he coordinates uh, international research projects on plastic pollution. Since 2021, he is the coordinator of the EU-funded pl project Plastic in Agriculture Production, impacts life cycle and long-term sustainability, popularly known as papillons. He co-created the International Knowledge Hub Against Plastic Pollution, a platform of independent scientists devoted to providing society and governance with science-based knowledge and recommendation and options to combat plastic pollution. Dr. Nizetto is also a contributor to the Scientist Coalition for an effective plastic treaty, for intergovernmental negotiations for a legally binding instrument to combat global plastic pollution. We hope today's event will have you focus on the topic more deeply. To start the process, we will place some links, uh, some research links work in the chat box. At the end of the speaker discussions, there will be likely a little time for any questions, we already have started getting questions and we'll try to answer as many as time permits. Dr. Nizoto, your thoughts on, uh, please on how plastic is impacting soil. Dr. Nizoto, over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, just let me share my presentation. Yes, thank you very much. I will give today a presentation titled Sources and Impacts of Plastic Pollution in Agricultural Soil. Um, this uh, figure plots the um, change in land use towards agricultural land over the last 2000 years. As you can see, during the last few centuries, there has been a, an explosion in conversion of land. Today, about 50% of all habitable land is devoted to food production. 70% of which is for producing feed for cattle and other type of uh, farm animals. If we plot uh, over this figure, the trend of the world population during the same period, we see a clear correlation. This is a typical case of positive feedback between two variables. More food means uh, uh, more people and more people means uh, more needs uh, to convert land. We are facing now a challenge is to feed the population that will reach 10 billion people. 
in a condition in which we cannot convert more lands because of the need of preserving biodiversity, because of the need of uh, reserving carbon stocks. Uh, and the available land, large uh, part of this available land uh, that is currently used in agriculture is characterized by soil exhaustion, loss of soil organic carbon, chemical pollution, and is subject to the adverse effect of climate change. So it's a serious challenge for humanity. As in the past, technology, production technology, will play a key role to achieve uh, food security and reliable crops. Plastic is a central commodity for this uh, uh, scope. As you can see, the use of plastic films, which is increasing worldwide, provide uh, protection for crops, a more efficient use of resources. Most uh, modern application of plastic in use uh, include uh, uh, seed coatings and um, encapsulation and suspension for uh, agrochemicals, as well as many other uses. Also circularity can introduce pollution, plastic pollution to soil. Um, this, for example, is the use of uh, um, sewage waste, sewage sludge as a uh, soil amendment or compost. Here in the picture, you see the largest compost facility in the world that is located actually in Norway, which is the country where I'm speaking from. So about only 3.5% of total plastic produ uh, production is used for agricultural application. And this generates globally about 5 million tons of waste annually. So um, it is difficult to estimate the input of plastic pollution for agricultural soil. We tried, uh, we made an initial guess for Europe and I'm presenting the result here. Uh, we have uh, that uh, in Europe, uh, the amount of intentionally released uh, microplastic to agricultural soil in the form of uh, encapsulation, suspension, and seed coatings reach uh, up to 35,000 tons every year, uh, according to the Environmental Chemical uh, Agency, uh, European Chemical Agency, ECA. The intentional releases from biodegradable mulching film degrading in soil are probably in the range between 5,000 and 10,000 tons per year. Non-intentional releases of plastic pollution to soil coming from, for example, the mismanagement of agricultural plastic amount uh, up to 200,000 tons per year. Sewage large application as a soil amending agent is also very important. Uh, it is estimated in Europe to be between 63,000 and 430,000 tons per year. We have then uh, the use of compost and digestate as a soil amending agent, which is between 821,000 tons per year. We should also account for uh, atmospheric deposition that affect the soils. And this, uh, uh, it is very variable. We, we can start, we, we start seeing that they could be more important than previously expected and can be between 50,000 and 1 million tons per year over European farmland. So there are multiple sources. Altogether, we can see that between 200,000 and 2 million tons a year of microplastic can be added to European agricultural soil every year. And this yet do not account for wastewater irrigation and irrigation with contaminated so the figure could be even higher. The figure you see here is an image of uh, uh, a microplastic originated from a degraded mulching film that we obtain through the use of a scanning electronic microscopy. Fragments like this one can be found and can accumulate in soils. Uh, so microplastic contamination in soil is not reversible and soil is not a non-renewable resource. So we are dealing with a problem that is uh, actually a serious problem. To date, China is, has the country that has produced uh, the largest volume of research in this field. Agricultural soil in China contains between five to 40,000 microplastics per kilogram of soil, depending on the region and the study, and also the detection method. These are about uh, 0.0001% to up to over 
more than 0.5% of plastic in soil. That are large amounts. The field uh, residues, for example, present uh, in uh, some soils due to the mismanagement of mulching films are a big contribution on extreme cases of pollution. In Europe at the moment, through a range of projects, including the one that I coordinate, we are uh, placing an effort to develop research and monitoring of situation. And data will be available in the, in the upcoming years. There is still limited information from other parts of the world. So there, there is a concrete need to establish capacity to try to uh, uh, show what is the situation on a broader part of the, the planet. So here you see uh, the result from a review paper published by uh, a Chinese colleague uh, in 2022, showing that agricultural soils are actually among the most uh, uh, contaminated. So they score high up in this, in this uh, range, uh, between, uh, including between 1,000 and 10,000 microplastic uh, items per kilogram of soil. These microplastic soil produce uh, some adverse effects. They can impact uh, physical, chemical, and biological soil properties. For example, they can decrease soil aggregation, uh, modify the bulk density, and the aggregate stability of soil. These are physical properties that are very important, especially for agricultural performance of soil. It can also affect the water holding capacity of soil, which is uh, uh, the way soil uh, address uh, uh, the balance of water and uh, phase, for example, drought period. Uh, Microplastic in soil can affect pH, can decrease uh, nutrient availability, can have an effect on the dissolved organic carbon in soil. Also, there are quite a large number of paper documented effects on microbial community structure and functioning. There are also uh, interaction between microplastic and soil organisms, soil fauna, uh, for example, like earthworms and other type of invertebrates. Microplastic can decrease the number of individuals in soil, their diversity, uh, their mobility and reproduction, enhance mortality. Uh, microplastic can be transported vertically in the soil column by some of these organisms that can also ingest. Here you see on the lower plot uh, that uh, the range of microplastic uh, contamination in soil overlap with the threshold in which effect can be seen with some important species. So we are already in a situation in which contamination of microplastic in soil is already exceeding effect threshold. Despite this, there is not yet any international regulation that protects agricultural soil uh, from microplastic pollution. Also, the interaction with plants has been documented. Uh, there are different type of effects. There are limited studies, but increasing very rapidly in number and quality. We observe uh, biochemical response, responses and, uh, for the plants. There are effects on germination and uh, early growth stages. Here, uh, this review paper, I recommend you, um, illustrate the range of concentration highlighted in red there, in which effects could be seen. In this case, mostly from laboratory study. There is still limited uh, information about how these responses unfold in real environmental condition. Again, you can see that concentration can happen at, uh, sorry, effects can happen in environmental ranges. So concentration that are possible in the, <coughs> in the environment, excuse me. Also, biodegradable plastic can produce negative effects on crop. The challenge here is to identify studies that address the long, the mid and long term effect of uh, plastic residues during the partial degradation and the release of chemicals that are contained in this material in soil. Only a few studies are available to date, but uh, all of them, most of them, show that there is actually any effect. So we will see in the upcoming year uh, an increase in the number of studies and scientific research addressing this topic. And this was my last uh, slide, so I thank you very much for uh, your attention.
thank you so much, Dr. Nizeto. This is indeed an eye opener. Uh, this uh, definitely uh, brings forward a lot of issues uh, that are there with plastic and soil. Uh, we now move on to uh, our next speaker, uh, Dr. Tapan Adhikari, who is the principal scientist of the Environmental Soil Science Division, Indian Council of Agricultural Research in Indian Institute of Soil Science, Bhopal. He has researched extensively on micronutrient nutrition, heavy metal pollution, and its management in soil and plants. Dr. Adhikari also focuses on the application of nanotechnology in agriculture. Dr. Adhikari, could you please tell us a little more about the findings of microplastic in Indian soil? Uh, Dr. Nijeto, if you would mind, please uh, stop sharing so that I can share my slides. I think I already stopped sharing. Ah, he has already stopped sharing. Could you please try once again, Dr. Adhikari? Yeah, but it is showing this slide only here. Maybe for some reason. Ah, uh, yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah. yeah. Is it visible? Yeah, it is visible. So may I start, Dr. Mohanadeep? May I start? Please, please go ahead, Dr. Adhikari. Okay. So good evening to everybody. First of all, I would like to thank the organizer, profusely, particularly Dr. Parib De, Director Atari and Kolkata for giving me this opportunity. And the topic given entitled Research and Findings on Microplastic in Soils in Indian Scenario has been aptly selected. Plastic culture applications are one of the most useful indirect agricultural inputs which hold the promise to transform Indian agriculture. But during survey among the farmers, I came to know that plastic removal from agricultural field is very tedious and labor intensive process. Instead of recycling, farmers generally mow down the plastic uh, mulch in soil itself. Large quantities of plastic fragments are left behind after crop cultivation. The leftover plastic debris gradually degrade into minute fragments with a diameter of less than five millimeter, known as microplastic. Microplastic are responsible for many changes in the soil physiological properties, suppose the, including the porosity, enzymatic activities, microbial activities, plant growth, and yield. Because of the ubiquitous nature and high specific surface area and strong hydrophobicity, microplastic play an important role in the transformation, transportation of toxic chemicals such as plasticizers polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, antibiotics, and the potentially toxic elements. This microplastic may be transported deep into the soil and can pollute the underground water. With this brief uh, introduction, I'm directly going to the next slides. That is the, uh, as per the, our research findings, we are just in, uh, in, uh, conducting or starting our research activities in Indian Institute of Soil Science, Bhopal, uh, with the help of one project, UKRI project, sponsor project. The first uh, hypothesis is that microplastic could affect enzymatic activities. So for this, we have conducted one experiment, pot culture experiment. Uh, we've taken 100 gram soils and with a different amount of the, less than four millimeter LDP, low density polyethylene, plastic mulch film, because I am giving in the agricultural field. So I will consist it myself on the mulch, plastic mulch in agricultural field. So this is the quantity 0.25 and 0.5%, 1%, 2%. Um, so this is the, and this is on video, but it probably this is not working. So we, we reduce the size, we reduce the size by uh, the polythene mulch with a scissor to make it less than four millimeter with a uh, seed. And we have added uh, this in the uh, pot culture a different quantity of this microplastic in the uh, soils. So after 100 days incubation time, this is the enzymatic study we have done. So we have taken three or four enzymes, but out of that, a contrasting result we got in the DRS activity and the urease activity. 
Uh, in the figure, you can show that you can see that uh, plastic mulch film residues, there is the microplastics, reduces the soil dehydrogen activity compared with the control. So uh, it is because due to the release of some chemicals like phthalate acid esters by the thin residues in the soil, which might impact enzymatic activity. On the contrary, this uh, irreducible activity uh, we got here, uh, the enhancing mode, which is increasing. And uh, the uh, logic is behind, behind that is that uh, microplastic can increase water holding capacity of soil, and this irreducible activity is more sensitive to soil moisture. So that is the logic behind that, why we are getting this irreducible activity higher and the lower the DRS activity. That is our results findings. Now I am talking about this, the plastic additives. This, uh, it has been added during the manufacturing process to provide, to modify the characteristics of the polymer to achieve the required properties of the final product. But these are the most dangerous uh, things. That is, the, that creates a lot of problem in the soil nuisance. That is, the first one is plasticizers, then the antioxidants, UV stabilizers, flame deterrents, and the lubricants. So all this will create problems. So this is the question, are plastic additives cause for concern? So there are three types. That is the hazard, no hazard, and missing hazard data. So here you can see the hazard, the bisphenol A, it is plastic hazard, it falls hazard. No hazard, erythromide, but it is fatty acids and uh, acetyl -vitic. Then the no hazard data, that is the T-phosphate. So these are the classic, this type of uh, chemicals are there, uh, cause the pollution or affect the soil processes activity. And uh, we analyze this additives through this, uh, by this way, and through the gas chromatography. And uh, after that, gas chromatography, mass spectrometry. So this is the uh, LDP plastic. Um, we, uh, we got this type of material here. This is the alkanes LDP degradation product look from lubricant. And then uh, the fatty acid lubricant. And then the fatty acid alcohols from the lubricant and triethanol amine derivative, stabilizer, emulsifier, and uh, erucidamide, that is the antistatic agent. And all these things, it is EGAFOS, we, I will discuss with this, EGAFOS 168 antioxidant is present in our Indian polythene mulch. And then you know, these are all these uh, materials we have bought in the estimation process. And uh, we have, uh, we just we studied that the uh, degradation process of this in the soil uh, for four months, July to October in the field. And we have found that the complete loss of the fatty acid, what I have discovered, the slower decline fatty acid and variable response of fatty alcohols. And then the triethylamine, complete loss of triethylamine, and degradation products not detected. Then the ergopos. It is only this ergopos 168, it is present in the soils and a little danger and degradation to leaching. This, this chemicals we got presents in the in the Indian soils from the Indian polythene mulch. So uh, the inference of the short uh, or small experiment, that is the rapid loss of fatty, as, fatty amides and fatty acids, but not considered hazards. Presence of Edgar 168, where hazard is unknown, and varying rates of loss, emergence of degradation products for triethylamine derivatives. So for this only, we, this, this uh, uh, type of chemicals may affect the activity. Some, uh, some uh, research also is going on in the field. We have started long-term experiment just now last year. One season effect uh, we can show you. This is the type of polythene mulch we have taken. That is a synthetic UK, this is a UK product, biodegradable from UK polythene mulch and the synthetic India. So these are the companies and, uh, and the composition companies and the, it is the color is black and uh, all are black in color. Our assumption is that is what uh, uh, Dr. Nijat probably told that microplastic may affect the rooting ability of plants by altering the soil bulb density, water holding capacity, as well as photosynthesis rate by directly interfering with the balance of plant chlorophyll and chlorophyll B, A and B ratios. So this is our assumption, but this is the first, uh, this is the just we have initiated first season uh, result. We didn't get this type of result. We are uh, just contrary to that, we are getting good results in comparison to control. All the chlorophyll content is higher in all these supporting soils. Uh, all, in, in also the plant type is higher in comparison to control. And this, all the polythene one soils, they're more or less showing the same results, so, somewhat increasing. And then the soil moisture content, of course, it has been increased in uh, compared to control. And uh, you can see there are three times and four times the probability increase, enhanced polythene mulch. Um, 
and the, next time this this is this season we are adding this uh, polythene mulch after reducing the size in the soil to uh, for the for conducting one experiment or to study the degradation product those who have studied on the i have already studied in the pot culture we do the same thing here in the field itself so after uh, it is a long one so i like to uh, so after this so this is mixing of the plastic mulch in the soil and after mixing this type of there and we will show the uh, crop here so we have taken the okra crop or bhindi so that is our uh, experiment is going on still result is yet to become and next assumption is that mps definitely influence the bacterial community composition by promoting growth of one type of microbial population and in the others so it is the our assumption and we have collected the soil samples from the two district of madhya pradesh that is the raisen and the hoshangabad or narmadapuram so this is the farmers rf1 rf2 two farmers narmadapuram rf1 or nf2 and nf2 and this is the uh, control of narmadapuram and control of raisen district so these farmers the long term they are uh, practicing this one at least 5 years we have collected to see is there any uh, effect on the, uh, the um, uh, microbial community or not and we have taken the two depth of soil 0 to 10 and 10 to 20 cm so this is the soil material mix study only and the v3 v4 regions of 16 s generation rna gene to be estimated so that part we are waiting for that and this is further analysis after this after this analysis we will able to see the effects of microplastic in soil so another some uh, one more slide is that that how to identify the microplastic in soil uh, in the there's lot of work in the ocean and water but uh, identification or separation or extraction microplastic from soil there we are also working on it some chinese friends they are doing that but uh, this is the all the instrument uh, we can call, we can uh, use this instrument microscopy and same and afm just here told and also important is micro micro ftr and ldir nir raman spectroscopy and um, all these things and nmr is equal so this this way you know, we can uh, go, uh, proceed in the microplastic analysis in india but uh, in my opinion at la, at le, uh, finally that in india all the lot of research works on impact of microplastic in ocean water have been done in kerala state also and also some research as scientist non soil scientist group they publish some review papers and articles based on their research microplastic in soil it is a new arena for the soil scientist to be worked upon to know the impact of microplastic as well as nanoplastic in soil microbial diversity and subsequent soil processes thank you so much monodik thank you so much dr adhikari uh, that really gives us a perspective of the indian scenario uh, we now move on to our next speaker so just just a moment please so we now move on to our next speaker who is dr hoffman so uh, dr hoffman is the professor and chair of environmental geosciences uh, university of vienna Uh, Dr. Thilo Hoffman is the director of University's Environmental Research Network, which has more than two hundred and fifty scientists from different disciplines focused on environmental issues. Dr. Hoffman is the vice director of the Center for Microbiology and Environmental System Science, and which he co-founded at the University of Vienna. He received several awards, including from those. uh from the german academic uh, scholarship foundation berlin technical university the erwin stephen prize and the german water chemical society dr hoffman thank you so much for joining us uh, over to you please to help us understand the sustainable use of plastic in agriculture thank you very much for the introduction and thanks a lot to my uh, previous speakers um due to the fact that i thought we have only 6 minutes or 7 minutes i kept these slides very short uh, i'm please uh, don't be upset that i don't show you experiments and data but we could discuss about this later so uh, and also thanks to luca because i just changed my talk 2 minutes ago and kicked off some slides because he has already shown some stuff so um 
let's go here. I would like to start with a comment from Tamara Lucas and Richard Horton from the Eat Lancet Commission Report 2019, which some of you probably know, but I like to link it to plastics. So what Tamara and Richard said is like, civilization is in crisis. We can no longer feed our population a healthy diet while balancing planetary resources. And for the first time in 200,000 years of human history, we are severely out of synchronization with the planet and nature. This crisis is accelerating, stretching Earth to its limits and threatening human and other species sustained existence. We know this and Luca showed perfectly how global population is increasing. We will have to feed 10 billion and we will have to increase food production by 50 or um, 60%. Uh, a paper which we published a little bit earlier, you can, if you like to in the audience, you can just scan this QR code and this is then, even it is behind a paywall, that's a reader link so you can read the paper. So we, we published a paper where we showed within other things that agriculture is already the biggest pressure on our planet. If you look to greenhouse gas emissions, that's 29%. Uh, Luca showed perfectly what is the scale of greenhouse gas emissions just from plastics, 4.5%. Energy is about 30% agriculture. Land use, one third of our planet is covered by agriculture. Groundwater, 70%. Of course, we you know, for example, like the seminars in India that you can measure with satellites, groundwater withdrawn in, in India. That, that's so how, severe how it is. It will increase to 80%. Deforestation, it's probably 75% due to agriculture and population will increase. If we look to the concept of planetary boundaries, agriculture is a major driver on planetary boundaries. So biosphere integrity, biodiversity loss, genetic diversity, the, the black dots here, that's agriculture. So agriculture is the driver in driving the planet outside safe operating spaces. For fertilizers like phosphorus and nitrogen, we also know that we have passed this. And then here's a little debate on novel entities. I would say for many novel entities, we have passed this and microplastics could be considered also at some of these novel entities. We just heard from our colleague that phthalates is an issue, PFAS is an issue. So we have a lot of chemicals in the environment, which uh, uh, really probably crossed already this boundary for novel entities. So I would like to make the link to plastics. The summary in the Eat Landsat Commission report was that what are the most important steps? So race productivity is the single most important step. Agricultural intensification together with natural ecosystem health is important. So not expansion, less emissions from fertilizers and plant protection products, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, spur technology innovations, manage demand, of course, food loss, waste shift to healthier diets, low meat consumption. And here comes plastic. So agriculture and the Anthropocene, and Lucas pointed this out perfectly, is plastic agriculture. So raise productivity, plastic plays an important role. It has benefits. You can have uh, uh, an earlier growth season, especially, for example, if you look here in Europe, you can um, have uh, more crops. You can link agriculture to intensification. Plastic plays a major role in intensification. And in Europe, for example, I'm originally German, but now in Austria, most of the greens, um, uh, cucumbers come from Spain, all grown under plastics. Reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Yeah, plastic plays an important role here. Spur technology innovation. This is much needed for plastic. We already heard about additives. I would fully agree. Reduce food loss. So plastic packaging, of course, helps also food loss. So I would summarize in a positive view, plastic plays an important and present and future role in plant agriculture and help to reduce food loss, energy and water consumptions, fertilizer use. And now I'm an environmental scientist and says, but yeah, it, it also harms the environment. But it's not so easy to say plastic only harms the environment. Why don't we just move out of plastics? I would personally say the environmental harm not using plastic immediately might be even bigger. So we just published a paper um, a few weeks ago, I think actually it's two or three weeks ago in Nature, Communication, Earth and Environment. It's open access. If you like to, you can use this QR code down here. 
and download the paper. And in this paper, together with um, 20 scientists globally, we talked on the one side on the benefits of plastic and its use. Yeah, so this is basically what I just talked about. Like, we want to reduce water, greenhouse gases, energy, pesticides, fertilizers. Yeah, we want to increase crop yield. Adaption to climate change is important. Maintain soil health. So plastics is used all over. Luca basically told about polymer coating fertilizers will be banned in the EU in three years, four years, and only biodegradable polymer coatings are allowed. Sex and bins, mulch films, 50% is mulch films. We, we touched also a little bit biosolids. I don't show data today, but my group works intensively in tire wear additives. So tire wear additives goes with biosolids, but also goes with recycled wastewaters. And initially I would say that I wouldn't expect substances like 6-PPD quinone to be found in salad. But our recent work shows us, yes, you find it in the salad, which you buy in the store, because with the biosolids and the tire wear from recycled wastewater, you bring it to the field and these plastic additives end up in food. Um, so yeah, irrigation pipes and tapes and so on. And what are the risks? We talked about the risks already, like human and trophic transfer there is not much data on this. There is data, but I would say there's really a lot of work to do about traffic transfer. Incorporation in nest and burrows like biota and microbiome. Transport to groundwater, my group is working a lot on transport. We also published another paper earlier last year, which showed that transport of plastics to groundwater, you really need to need to the substance and the transport pathway. In most cases, it's not relevant, but in some cases, it's relevant. So fertility, we talked. Additives, my colleague before just mentioned additives. I would say this is one of the biggest concerns over here that you have additive uptake and transport. Root functions, shoot functions, growth, uptake quality, yield, fragmentation, degradation, of course, all big problems. And as I said, since only six minutes, I like to make this talk a little bit shorter. So that's my basically my take-home slide. It's what we discussed here in this uh, paper with 20 authors is what are possible pathways to a more sustainable future for the use of plastics. I would say first thing is you need to cross out energy production from fossil sources. It's, it's a no brainer, but to be very honest, 4.5% of global CO2 emissions is due to plastic production. And this is from the production process. It's not the crude oil. So it doesn't matter if you have bio-based or fossil-based plastics. It is the energy in the production process. So you need to increase the share of renewable energy dramatically in the facility. And then there are two things. So renewable energy productions. And then of course, rational use. We just heard about CO2 emissions. So we need to reduce this. Uh, so only use plastics when it's really needed, use alternatives where they make sense. I would say we have to go to mandatory collection after use and provide this as a service. So it is not necessarily that a company just sells the mulch film. You could always do regulation that a company that only sells the film, but offers a service to bring this film back. And then you know there's a lot of research which needs to be done to have the collection after use and to make this recyclable. Recycling at the moment is not really easy because it's soiled, the plastics is heavily damaged. There are some papers on washing facilities. There are some papers on how you can basically recycle it back to monomers and use this. A lot of technology innovation needed over here that you can really reuse plastics. On the other side, the benefit is the waste stream is pretty constant. So you know the polymers used in agriculture. For pesticides containers, this is done. Not so much for silage film and for mulch film. So that's important. And the other route, uh, it was just criticized a minute ago, but I would still say if plastics are non-collectible, yeah, they should be fully biodegradable after use within a certain time frame. Yeah, so certified certain time frame and under realistic um, environmental conditions, pH, uh, temperature, soil moisture, and fully biodegradable, not like stop at a certain point, but fully biodegradable. So they can go back to biomass feedstock. If you like to, you could even close the loop and have bio-based plastics. 
I criticize a little bit biospace plastics. I don't criticize them, but it is impossible to substitute globally plastics by biobased plastics. There's just not enough at the moment material without harming the environment. And then what was just um, said a second ago, use truly green additives. Additives is a big problem. I, I comment here basically what the previous speaker has been saying. So innovation in additives is really needed. And that's it basically in my six minutes. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Hoffman. Uh, that was really enlightening. And uh, your research will definitely pave the way for a better understanding of the sustainable use of plastic in agriculture. So now we move on to our next speaker. So we have been talking a lot about the uh, how plastic is uh, affecting. So now we have some solutions. So our next speaker is an innovator. Let me introduce Dr. Cantillon. Dr. Marion Cantillon is a TGASC Wall Scholar at TGAS Johnston and University College Corp, Ireland. Her research focuses on creating a more financially sustainable and efficient approach to farming. Dr. Cantillon founded Pitseal, an innovative edible solution that can replace plastic sheeting. This biofilm derived from seaweed forms a sturdy seal on the grass, uh, a sturdy seal on the grass. Its unique feature is its edibility by cows, reducing methane levels. So over to you, Dr. Cantillon. We are eagerly waiting to hear about your innovation. Thank you so much and thank you for having me here today and I think it's great that I get to follow Dr Hoffman um because I actually am in that bio field I'm in um bio uh, bio spray is what I've created um so yeah thank you for that fabulous introduction so my name is Marion Cantlin I'm from Ireland so it's in Europe small little island but we're heavily reliant on our agri and we're a massive exporter of beef and dairy um and I work with UCC and Chagas, exactly. Uh, so I created pit seal. And what we're hoping to do with pit seal is replace plastic in silage covering. So very specific. And I know our time is short, so I might just tell you a story. Um, it might be able to relate with some of you um, and it'll just summarize what we do. So if you just take, for example, this is a farmer. He's based in Ireland. He has 32 hectares. He's a dairy farmer. He operates in very tight margins and he's very conscious of his climate targets because any country in the EU now we have been obligated to reduce our emissions. But he wants to uh, implement sustainable future practice onto his farm that will allow him to practice in the future. And one of his biggest concerns is winter silage. Um, for those of you not from an agri background, a silage pit is where a farmer stores food for winter for his cows and it's looking like this. So as you can see in the picture, it's consistent of blast, black plastic film with tires on top of it and it usually um, houses food for close to six to nine months depending on the farm structure and underneath this is grass and this grass is fermented and then fed to the animals throughout the winter months. So at the moment, this process is quite time consuming for the farmer. It usually takes a team of three people and a lot of hours. So you can imagine it's very inefficient and very costly for the farmer. If the plastic lifts any bit from the silage covering, it gets exposed to air, so it oxidizes, it's useless. So the farmer has to mount the pit. Uh, past this case, for example, he mounted the pit pit close to 300 times last season just to ensure that the film or the sorry plastic sheeting was secured there's been numerous farm incidents associated with that because that pit is quite large you're talking 12 feet by 9 feet so you can imagine the size um I know professor uh, Dr Hoffman just mentioned that there is a recycling element of plastic that is available in Ireland I know predominantly that recycling element isn't utilized because it mean it means the farmer has to maintain his paperwork or receipts from the day of purchase which is often a year later when he needs to actually recycle that and if anyone knows any farmers here paperwork isn't really their forte so it leads to a lot of illegal burning and burying on site and of course then this plastic film has to be peeled back every time you want to eat from the silage pit so every time that you need the feed to be exposed so what we've come up with is pit seal i'll just show you a short video of it 
and it, this is it just being applied onto a demo pit. So it's a spray on biofilm. As you can see now, this pit is quite small in comparison, but the film gets sprayed onto the silage pit. And then you can finish it with a uh, lance. So any sidewalls or corners or any of those awkward areas that you, the spray bar can't get to. And then it's fully set. <laughs> And this then is consumed by the animal. So it's a zero waste process. So what we aim to do is save time. The film sets in two hours. So reducing that time from eight hours to two hours. It's a one person job. You saw there in the demo film video, that was myself spraying it on. And that was myself driving the tractor. It's zero waste. We wanted to create a circular economy and we didn't want to be dealing with the recycling element and that logistical issue. And um, so we met it consumable for the ruminant to eat it. And of course, then my big area is in uh, climate change. So I'm trying to add in all those methane reducing elements into it. Um, so I guess that's short and sweet, uh, but that is all of me. And I welcome any questions. Thank you so much. Uh, we really need such innovations to reduce the use of plastic in agriculture. Now we move on to Dr. Pradeep Day. Uh, the Director of the Indian Council of Agricultural Research, Agricultural Technology Application Research Institute, Kolkata. Dr. Day is well known for his research on soil fertility mapping. He has developed nutrient plans for 173 districts of India covering 20 states. Dr. Day has a patent for a portable soil testing kit. He has contributed to over 400 publications with a significant emphasis on soil and crop production sustainability. Dr. Day is a recipient of the Social Innovator Award by the World Bank. Dr. Day, we thank ICAR Atari Kolkata for hosting this webinar uh, with us. Over to you to wrap up today's discussions. Thank you, Manodiji. And uh, first of all, I must thank all my predecessors who on this panel who has actually dealt with almost all facets of uh, microplastic plastic. Dr. Luca, Dr. Odhikari, Dr. Hoffman, Dr. Marion, and all the other um, the audience present for this particular webinar. So I'll be dealing with soil health, soil and produce quality, how uh, in fact it is affecting through plastic. You know, the journey of soil started with molten magma, then these rocks, and then little soil formed. And these ultimately different horizons it forms and requires about 1000 years to make only one inch of soil. And we have our dependence on soil with different uh, our services and healthy soil required for food, feed, fertilizer, biodiversity, then meeting even soil is the richest, one of the richest source of sequestering carbon. So if soil is too much disturbed, then carbon dioxide may be emitted to the environment. So it is related to environment, resilience power, structural strength, it provides so many things, all our mansions, bridges, everything on the soil. And we have this many four particular arms or ecosystem services like food producing food feed fiber that is provisioning arm, then controlling through mainly carbon sequestration, nutrient cycling that is support service and cultural aspect, cultural arm by giving person different arts, pottery and other thing, the opportunity through this arm. So all the four arm of ecosystem services is touched by the soil. Earlier when we began agriculture, we could maintain soil productive capacity for some time. After that, it has declined. Whether it will be stabilized at this step or it will decline further or we can have some offset management practices and we can increase, that depends on our choice of different uh, management options. And this decline may actually be aggravated by introduction of more and more microplastic in the environment. Some other challenges are 
frequencies of different weather events, particularly cyclone and drought, flood, all these are um, increasing with time, aggravating climate change, imbalanced nutrient application is another, and accelerating environmental pollution. And in that, actually microplastic can be one more introduction. And actually, this is one photograph. Most of you might have seen this one. This is muscle uh, larvae. Dr. Dr. Day. Yeah. Dr. Day, I'll just interrupt. Uh, for some reason, we are not able to see the other slides. You may just want to... Is it? So it is not changing? No. Oh, you have to... Again, there is some... So... Is it now okay? Yeah. So you have seen this slide? No. Yeah, we are seeing this present slide. This one we have seen. This one also you have seen. Uh, so we couldn't see the other slides. You can continue okay. with your... Uh, okay. Uh, with so your, uh, I, as I was telling, it depends on whether we'll be stabilizing at this level or we'll go further down or we can go up. That depends on our management options. And there are different climate-based uh, and other challenges soil is facing, like imbalanced nutrient application, climate change, and accelerating environmental pollution. So this particular slide I was uh, actually I was telling that this particular slide, this particular photograph, most of you might have seen this is a kind of dreadful event of plastic can do in muscle larvae. It was found that with increasing microplastic concentration inside the muscle larvae, this plastic con microplastic concentration is also increasing with time. So it is a almost a direct proportion to microplastic concentration in the environment that shows that there is definite uh, problem for uh, living bio and biota, particularly living organism in the environment with time due to microplastic uh, this uh, pollution. Indian scenario, we are dealing with, uh, we need more, 35% more food for 2050. We need more area for accommodating forest. We need more area for accommodating our say, carbonization that is happening. And also we need to cut down the emission. So all these things, along with that, there is another uh, thing is coming to the, that is pollution of microplastic. Mainly there are different soil functions that actually uh, soil perform on its ultimate and good capacity. And then we have seen that this soil function can be related to different soil properties, like nutrient cycling with all these properties, this, this golden color arrows, you can see like that different soil functions, they are associated with different soil properties. Also, these are the different SG target that are, that are related to soil quality. So soil is performing different uh, aspect of sustainability. From our studies, we have seen that soil function like biodiversity and productivity, these are the indicator that is called key indicator. This is derived from principal competent analysis followed by uh, expert consultation like PC1, 2, 3, 4. We could select two each uh, based on eigenvalues. And then from expert consultation, we come down to five to six different expert indicator or master indicator. If you look into it, there are different, all these function, there are different master indicator, but one master indicator, which is organic carbon, it is also associated with both yield and quality of fiber. We have seen it in jute, also in some vegetable crop. This is one particular experiment I have shown here. Like this is, with the organic carbon and different master indicator was chosen like this from principal component one, two, three, four, and then followed by expert consultation. 
carbon is the central to nutrient cycling and our water, nitrogen, and all other nutrient cycle that moves around carbon cycle. That's why carbon is called master indicator. This smooth cycle actually disrupted by the plastic in the layer. If there is plastic, this, this is faster actually because there is opening up of your uh, aggregate structure. So again, coming back to these indicators vis-a-vis -vis soil function, we have seen that soil organic carbon is a, one of the master indicator or key indicator appearing on both biodiversity productivity, filtering and buffering, as well as nutrient cycling. All these three, organic carbon is one indicator and microplastic negatively impact microbial community and alter its composition diversity. Lot of literature in the um, our domain, it is available. Then it also can absorb and accumulate heavy metal and pesticide and other toxic substances. That is one of its property. Through that also, it is hampering the microbial community and from microbial community, it is having a negative impact on organic carbon. Again, another one is aggregate stability. That is also with the soil solute, uh, this flow and this particular function of uh, soil function, it is affected by aggregate stability. And this aggregate stability, again, microplastic acts as physical barrier preventing the formation of stable soil aggregate. So that's why that cycle of smooth cycle of nitrogen, carbon, those are faster actually when there is more microplastic. Another thing I would like to highlight is this type of salt affected soil, poor quality water, wherever it is used and the acid soil. This, this soil, you know, these are mainly dissociated soil, poor quality water with high RSC if you use, then only it dissociates. And this lead lateritic soil, which are mainly confined to the acid soil region, they are also porous structure. So here, if micro, this microplastic is there, then it is all, it is further, the soil structure is disintegrated. That is the problem in these areas. So the waste management hierarchy, there are some already told, just to summarize the source reduction, reuse, recycle, and all these things. But the first three, these are more preferred and later one, these are in the funnel, those are less preferred, but the, there is also some green alternative. Shrimp shell product, prawn shell plastic, and seaweed based plastic, these are available along with wood pulp, cellophane, then your even mushroom waste they have used for making some alternative uh, product. All those can be used. But the thing is, all these are very costly. Somehow we need to scale it up so that its cost reduction is there. And then bioplastic, it was already told by uh, our speakers, Dr. Luca, Dr. Hoffman, but bioplastic, yes, uh, as Dr. Hoffman told, it is having a prospect, but too less production now and too high cost. Both the thing somehow, like uh, one particular point that was very nicely said, that um, particularly I think Dr. Hoffman told that just production is not enough. The corporate body should take the responsibility of collecting back. So the corporate social responsibility comes into the place and then they should either share some of the collection aspect or they should go for cost sharing of some of the bioplastic so that it is made popular. Another thing for just for research purpose, I was thinking just it is a uh, maybe philosophical stage. From my own experience, I can say that we need a soil test where it can predict how much microplastic is there in the soil. And then there are three things like whether it is allowable range and within the agronomic threshold or it is running out of tolerance limit or it is in the toxicity range. Even in the toxicity range, in the, even in the run out uh, tolerance limit, there may be three different levels like lower limit of toxicity, moderate level and higher limit of run out 
toxicity. So that type of philosophical soil test based management is possible, but first of all, we need to zero in on some soil test for microplastic. So that we, and then we have to tag it with the agronomic threshold and environmental threshold. Managing microplastic vis-a-vis -vis SDG. So land governance is one, and these are SDGs related to land governance. Extension advisory services is very much important for awareness generation. Another thing, and we have different uh, uh, SDG. Finance and market, as I was telling, it has to be scale it up. And then some cost sharing based on corporate social responsibility that is required. Local governance and cooperation is also important and indigenous technological knowledge. There are some indigenous technological knowledge available in different societies for alternative use that has to be used. So these are some of the aspects that you can consider and key metrics for sustainable plastic free soil management. A particular matrix can be developed where land governance, extension and advisory services, local governance and cooperation, finance and market, and monitoring and evolution at each step has to be considered. Thank you one and all. Thank you very much, uh, those who are joining. And thanks to all my predecessors who, who have uh, panelists who have done excellent job in this particular webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Day. Uh, it was so nice to hear from you. Uh, I'll thank each of the speakers. Uh, I will just want to remind everyone that Earth Day is coming up on 22nd of April uh, 2024. So uh, I would really appreciate if you have plans towards Earth Day because you're, you are uh, huge voices and it will definitely create an impact. So uh, since Planet versus Plastic is the theme for Earth Day, so your work is very, very pertinent. So I request everyone to really uh, come together and really make it a very important uh, Earth Day. Thank you so much. And it was such a privilege to be with all of you. Uh, I thank you once again. And we would really love to uh, continue our uh, collaboration and maybe again hear you in a different session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much.